Hey y'all, it's Nikki with The Worthy Projects and I'm here after my morning walk for a long form video to talk about some of the things I've been discussing in the shorts with marriage, divorce, remarriage, and reconciliation. And in particular, I wanted to talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 10 through 12 and what that looks like walking that out in real life. If any of you heard my quick story time um, from yesterday, you know my relationship history. I'm not going to go back over that. It's in the playlist if you want it. It's only 60 seconds. You can go back and listen to it. What I do want to say is that I want to encourage the people who are in the throes of having to make the choice to remain unmarried or be reconciled. And as you know, if you listened to the, my video before, that I... I have a first spouse who is, that was divorced, divorced from, who's still living. Now, and I don't agree with people who say Deuteronomy 24 prohibits all, um, pro, uh, you know, pro prohibits people who, uh, from reconciling with their first spouse if there was another uh, marriage or if someone died or anything like that because I was remarried after um, we got divorced and he is deceased, but I'm not under Israelite law. Christ living the perfect life, dying a tragic death, <clears throat> resurrecting himself and seating himself at the right hand of God uh, freed me, if I were even under it in the first place, from having to do anything with the law. But again, I was never under it because I'm a Gentile. So I know some people still say that uh, Deuteronomy 24, if you do divorce and remarry someone else, you can't uh, you can't remarry your first spouse or whatever. I don't I don't agree with that. Anyway, it's another video. But after I now that I've detoxed my life from years years of false teaching. And seeing leaders not <laughs> conform to scripture and then teaching, you know, the people who were gathered wrongly through their behavior as well as through their outright teachings. So after I detoxed my life from that tragedy, read and really studied the whole Bible on this topic of marriage for myself. And now knowing for the first time what the marital covenant really means in the eyes of the Lord, I am actively choosing to live out scriptures and remain unmarried, not reconcile, even though that would be a possibility to me under the scriptures, because he's neither one of us are married, but I'm, I've actually chosen to remain unmarried. And it's not out of legalism or bitterness or some kind of trauma from my past relationships, but my life has taught me why Jesus said what he said about eunuchs in Matthew 19 and what why Holy Spirit inspired Paul to write what he wrote in 1 Corinthians 7, 10 through 12 about reconciling or remaining unmarried. And it did this in the following 16 ways. So my life, when I am alone, has revealed the following. Physically, my health is better. I sleep through the night. My weight is down. My numbers, the medical numbers you get, you know, high blood pressure, cholesterol, that kind of stuff, down. I eat better. Emotionally, I'm not in a constant state of fear and anxiety uh, that I'm going to do or say the simplest thing and set someone off or remind them of someone or something that someone else did to them. And then I then become the target of their anger. That was a constant issue when I was in relationships before. Um, I also, I don't feel like I have to always be on all the way, all the time, you know, just chipper and smiling and why aren't you smiling? And just everything is just, you know, me putting on this show for another person. I... My nervous system is no longer in a static state of dysregulation. And I don't have to 
babysit and regulate another person's emotions because they can't do it themselves and they expect me to do it. And while I am babysitting and coddling and regulating them, my emotions, my regulatory system you know, spirals into exhaustion and I crash while they're just fine and they're just fine not helping me get better after me helping them kind of participated in me crashing into exhaustion. I don't have to deal with that as an unmarried person. Look at it mentally, my head is clear. Y'all, <laughs> I am able to think. I don't know if y'all know <laughs> what a blessing it is to think and to reason and not just be on some emotional, chaotic, confusing roller coaster with people. Especially if you're talking about a relationship where you're with people who are really into saying things are Holy Spirit. I have experienced that in my life with not just romantic relationships, but with um, several other types of relationships. And it is nothing but cure, cure, pure emotional chaos. And being alone, I have seen that my head is clear. I am able to think with my frontal, you know, with my frontal cortex, my frontal lobe, instead of instantly reacting out of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, because I don't know how this other person I'm in this relationship is, is going to react to something. So I'm trying to maneuver myself, make sure that I'm doing exactly what it is I need to do to make sure they're okay One, when I'm not okay. I don't have to deal with that being unmarried. Socially, I enjoy fellowshipping with the community of strong believers around me. That is something I never experienced in any of my adult relationships, any of my adult um, romantic relationships. I did not experience a strong community of believers around me where there was friendship involved. And, but by myself, I am really flourishing and people, it's funny because people are like, oh, well, you know, you're an extrovert, Nicole. And I'm just like, you know, it's interesting because I wonder, because as I've worked through a whole lot of trauma and I've been able to do that being by myself, you know, working through my trauma and you know, childhood stuff, adulthood stuff, you know, relationship stuff, all that. And not just that, but having the opportunity now because I have time. I'm not so distracted to spend with the Lord and in his word and just bask in his presence, not an NAR, NAR kind of basking stuff. We're not doing that. Let's be clear. But just to be in his presence and read his word, emphasis on reading his word because his word is beautiful and he gives it to us for our protection, really, so I would suggest reading it and doing what it says because I wish I did because I always find it in the end that it was right and everything it said and it actually has covered everything in my life. So yeah, anyway, sorry for the tangent. But um, yeah, so I'm able to fellowship with people more now and they think, uh, they, they say I'm an extrovert and I can't help but wonder if the whole introversion thing or whatever, if that was really based upon circumstances and not really who I was, if that was just based upon the environment, the people I've been around most of my life. And when I was around people who I felt really safe and comfortable with on a spiritual level, it's just totally different. I feel totally different. I feel more alive and like I, uh, I feel more open to, to talking and just doing fun things. And it's just, it's different when I, it's just different now than it's been, ever been in my life. It's just different. And I just noticed that, you know, when it's, when I'm either in a relationship or thinking about a relationship, because I haven't, because since college, you know, I was married out of college, 
then um, we were uh, we were married for a while. Then I said, and like I said before, you know, I'd gotten divorced, got remarried. Um, I was in, now he's passed away. Um, <clears throat> I was in another relationship and, you know, this stuff wasn't back to back or anything like that, like at all. But it's like when I wasn't in a relationship, it was, you know, thinking about a relationship. So I spent so much time from the time I was 18 until the time I was um, 40, uh, 47. I'm 48 now. Around 47, I was starting to be over it, honestly. I was just starting to be over the whole relationship thing. I just, I just was. And... I'm seeing the difference now that in my, how I relate to other people so far as me, my, me being social during that 18 to 47, I could see, and then, you know, younger, but I'm talking about adulthood. I could see why people would think, I, you know, I, I would see why I was more introverted because of the people who I was around. So anyway, I want to get to spiritually. And th this is the way that my life was different spiritually being uh, unmarried and not concerning myself with relationships. So number one, my relationship with the Lord is exponentially <laughs> multiplicity <laughs> so much better because I am not distracted and slipping, sliding and wallowing in the gutter of idolatry. I'm focused on the Lord and not on material things or creature comforts. My prayer life is vastly, vastly improved. Not, I'm not compromising my beliefs and seeking to please people instead of God in violation of scripture. And I'm not compromising where I choose to gather with other believers. I choose when I go to meet with the local church, I choose where I go to meet with the local church and I choose what teachings I will and will not submit myself to and what teachers I will and will not submit myself to. I get to choose that on my own and I don't have to talk to anybody about it or hear it or hear anything about it, if they, yeah, that that's that's a beautiful thing, and I also see how beautiful the Word of God is, because I'm actually reading, and reading all of it, and in context, not just for an answer to something I want, or to look up a blessing, or to validate something I'm claiming is Holy Spirit, and it's really just my flesh, you know, y'all know all this stuff, I'm sure. You know, I'm really reading and loving the word and just seeing why he left it for us. It really is for our own good. And it's, and people want to say, oh, religious spirit, you know, whatever. Run your Bible, get out the box, whatever. You don't know. There's a reason kids love, like playing with boxes and not the shiny toys that come out of them. Baby, the box called the Bible. Let me tell you something. You need to read it because it will blow your mind away and yeah, it has some hard sayings, but you know, it's like, we want the perks, but we don't want the problems, problems of Christianity. And it tells us that we're going to suffer. We're going to have problems, but we also have joy, especially in the Lord. So it's been great for me to just read my Bible and be able to understand it. Because like I said earlier, my mind is clear and I'm not dysregulated because my emotions are everywhere because I'm dealing with some nonsense that's just nonsense so yeah y'all it's great uh, i mean it's great and finally <laughs> freedom and peace Whew, i feel engulfed overwhelmed by my freedom in him and his peace um i'm really learning what it is for him to be the prince of peace I can do whatever the Lord has put in my heart and on my path, go wherever he has, wherever he is sending me, and I can freely do it when and how I want to without having to discuss it with anyone. 
another experience I never had in any of the relationships that I've been in as an adult. So to those of you who are divorced and you're wrestling with reconciling versus unmarried, and by wrestling, I mean, uh, I'm meaning that it is difficult for you. The unmarried part is um, difficult for you. Like say, for instance, your spouse is off doing whatever, married to someone else or whatever, I don't know. But I'm just telling you that you can find joy. There is so much joy in the Lord. It's not a curse. And while I know divorce is not something you know the Lord wants, I mean, of course not. Because Genesis 2, 24 tells us that Mark, um, Jesus talks about it. You know, the two shall become one. And I do believe, though, that God has you. No, I don't believe it. I know it. God has you wherever you are in whatever state you're in. He is right there with you. And um, you will be okay. Frankly, I love it here. I mean, you don't have to take my attitude about it, but I, I, I love it here. And it's, it's just a safe, happy place for me. And I am, for the first time, you know, since I'm not concerning myself with any romantic or intimate relationship <clears throat> with anyone, <clears throat> with anyone but the Lord, um, I don't know. It's just the first time I felt free. Because before that, I just felt like I was suffocating. And I don't feel like that anymore. And so, remaining unmarried, deciding, making that decision, has been a blessing for me. Hope this encouraged you, maybe comforted you. Please don't take what I said to um, go out and um, divorce somebody or not reconcile. I'm just trying to encourage people who... You know, who are um, struggling or having challenges with the unmarried part, challenges they don't want to have. So thank y'all for listening. Y'all have a great day.